In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is born. Today, we have the Nativity, the birth of Christ, behind us on December 25th. And as we move forward from there, the church draws our attention to Paul's preaching of the gospel to the Galatians. Paul preaches not a natural gospel. Paul preaches not a gospel from man. He says, I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. It is not an invented gospel. It is not one devised by the cleverness of human beings sitting in a smoke-filled room trying to plot the overthrow of the world through some clever scheme about death and resurrection. It is not that. It is not a man-made gospel. So the gospel is also then not merely a natural persuasion. When man wants to sell you something, he persuades you according to what might seem to benefit you. He persuades you according to what might seem initially attractive or valuable or something that will appeal to your senses, to your sense of well-being. And through that way, persuade you. But Paul says, I neither received the gospel from man nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. He neither received it from man nor was taught it. Now we know that Paul was probably aware of the content of the gospel, of the intellectual content of the gospel. The information that was being shared about the gospel was not a secret. To Paul, why do we know this? Because Paul was seeking out Christians who would be identified by their words and by their doctrine. So Paul was aware through man of the content, the intellectual information of the gospel. But we know that Paul on his way to Damascus, along the road to Damascus, was, was struck down supernaturally by Christ. But as he says, it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. A revelation is an immediate disclosure, an immediate unveiling to Paul the nature of the gospel. Jesus Christ personally revealed himself in power to Paul. So Paul's conversion to the gospel was a supernatural event. If we look at the book of Acts a little bit earlier, at the day of Pentecost, we see again that the Holy Spirit comes and falls upon everyone, and then there is again a supernatural conversion. There is a supernatural dimension to the, to the conversion to Christ. Paul continues. He says, for you have heard of my former conduct. Why does he say that? He uses this word for. Paul is a very logical thinker. So Paul uses the word for in a link in a chain of reasons, of reasoning. So Paul is trying to demonstrate to people the connection between a series of important ideas. So he says, the gospel is not according to man, for I neither received it from man. And then he says, for you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism. Paul was absolutely the most committed religious person you could have met. He was an expert in theology, an expert in the law. He was trained by the best teachers. 
And yet none of that amounted to conversion to Christ. He says, I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. He's giving this to be able to show the contrast between what happened before Christ revealed the gospel to him to what happened after Christ revealed the gospel to him. He was set and committed with a certain, you would even say, personality. His very person was shaken to the core by the gospel when it was supernaturally revealed to him. He says he advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries, he says, in my own nation, being, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. Very pious, religious, committed, zealous, dedicated man of God. And yet, he was an enemy of Christ. A person can be filled with the utmost amount of knowledge, information, and education, and still be and remain an enemy of Christ. So we never understand that knowledge is valuable merely for its own sake, because Paul's heart was off. And then Paul says in verse 15, 15 of Galatians chapter 1. But when it pleased God, when it pleased God, we see that there is a supernatural initiation of the conversion of Paul based on the pleasure of God. When it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me through his grace. God isn't merely calling us through information. The gospel has informational content. The gospel has elements to it that require us to have certain amounts of knowledge. There is a basic knowledge requirement for the gospel. But God doesn't call us through this knowledge. He calls us through His grace. His grace has power. His grace has energy. Paul says that the gospel itself is the power of God unto salvation. I want to place before you a gospel that has power. A gospel that transforms you. Not a gospel that when you go home, you can merely write it down and stick it on the refrigerator and say, there is an interesting list of information. I'll check that out one day. It seems like it might be important. That's not the gospel that Paul is talking about. Paul says that when it pleased God and called him through his grace to reveal his son in me. We see this word reveal again from revelation. God immediately revealed Christ to Paul. That he might preach him among the Gentiles. So we see in this description of Paul's conversion that the gospel has a supernatural power and energy to convert a person from X mode to Y mode. Therefore, the gospel is not merely about acting nice or being good. The gospel, first of all, is about the power and energy of Christ in you, revealed in you. So as you pray in the morning and in the evening, as you go about your day, 
reflect on whether or not the power of the gospel is revealed in your very heart. That Christ is the source of all of your strength. The center of all of your faith. Be converted by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ is born. Christ.